I got my baby back, Peter. Built out the shop. I got my baby back, Peter. Built out the shop. Weeping a ride. That's like uh, becoming a tradition. We're gonna talk today, I'm gonna talk, I guess. I'm gonna talk real fast about the company team option that Prime uh, started offering sometime, maybe July, August, maybe somewhere around July, August, I think it was, something like that. Um, no Hippie told me to do this video about two, three times. Shout out to No Hippie, man. I think you still off work, bro. Um, shout out to No Hippie, man. Great guy. No Hippie Trucking and Transportation, if you uh, haven't checked him out before. Shout out to Do It All. He's back at work as well. Welcome back to work, brother. You know, shout out Truck and Trev, say in the hallway. Um, hey, I love the Johnson's Logic, man. I love that guy, man. Check out his YouTube channel. I'll try to put all of these links. I try to, almost like citing a paper in school, I try to, if I say your name, I'll throw it in the doggone links. Um, shout out to Million Man and Long Haul Trucker. Sorry, uh, Million Mile Man and Long Haul Gypsy. Shout out to both of them, man. Me and Eric were talking about y'all a little bit earlier. Um, if I may just kind of give a word to the students and trainees and I'll combine the videos and hopefully y'all watch it. Shout out to all the students and trainees, man. I was on, I was at the plaza and you know what a shuttle drops you off and you can look over the hill at everybody practicing on the pad. I was doing that, um, waiting on the shuttle. I was just looking over, you know, just kind of looking at the pad and all the students like, man, there's, there's our future trainees. There's our future drivers. There's future in-house trainees. They, those are the, that's the next, the, the next set of leaders. That's, that's, that's the next generation. That's the, you know, those are the ones rising, you know? So that was cool. Um, I have a respect for y'all coming out here during the winter time. Y'all are out there in the cold. I mean, it's been snowing. We got the wind. Y'all out there getting it done though. I got students telling me, yeah, I had to run to Walmart, give me some long johns. And so, hey. I got respect for y'all. When I came, it was summertime. Nevertheless, the company team option. Um, I know I did a brief overview video before, but what was asked of me was to really um, give my thoughts on the program as a whole, give my thoughts on um, whether I enjoyed it or not, whether I would recommend it or not, things of that nature. So I'm gonna do that. Not gonna take too long, but I do wanna go a little bit more in depth than the last one. The last one was only a few minutes and I burned through it. So. Just a quick overview. If you haven't watched the other one, I think there's something I left out in the other one, but can't really remember. Quick overview. Um, Prime gives you the opportunity. Uh, if you are in TNT and have completed 30,000 miles, um, generally speaking, if there are no you know, other you know, outlying factors, after 30,000 miles, you have the opportunity to sign up to be a company team driver. Um, you will have to do so. The agreement is for you to do so before, for 120 days before you are eligible to make any other decisions. And, uh, you know, at least when I was going through, um, they put you in a brand new Pete, you and your co-driver, and you roll on out. 21 Ultra Loft. Uh, can't think of any other stipulations right now as far as the program goes, but that's basically how it rolls. Um, so, First, I'm gonna give you a little bit of advice if, you're, if you've already, no, actually, I think it should go the other way around. Did I enjoy the program? I did. Now, if you're thinking about the program, you're gonna hear people say, oh, you shouldn't do it, there's gonna be two new drivers, y'all ain't gonna know what you're doing, y'all gonna run off the side of the mountain, you ain't gonna know what you're doing, yada, yada, yada. Well, none of that happened to me. <laughs> Thank God, of course. And I uh, had two different co-drivers, none of that happened. Um, would I recommend the program? I would recommend it to some people and others. Um, I would say maybe it's really not for you. Um, you know, I wanted to go through the program because I felt I was ready to spread my wings. And I also wanted to go ahead and uh, start receiving uh, higher income. Those were two uh, motivations for me. So that's why I did it but other people may it may not be for you so for example if you're not a people person it's probably not for you okay 
Um, now, what I mean by people person, I'm not saying you got to be chipper and all of that good stuff. But what I am saying is, if generally speaking, you do not like being around people, this is not for you, right? When you get with this co-driver, it's going to be someone you've never met before. Y'all are going to have to go through a get to know each other period. And it's going to be longer and dive deeper than the couple few hours y'all took to get to know each other to decide whether or not y'all wanted to team together. Um, that's just, that's a part of the game. Okay. You don't have time to really get to know someone in depth. So you're kind of going to get to know each other on the truck. Um, if you're not one who can flex and bend, this is probably not for you because you're getting on a truck with someone that you've only spent a few hours with prior to making a commitment. Um, y'all, the both of you will have to flex and bend. All right. There's just no way, there's no way it can happen like that. Um, so if you can't flex and bend and, you know, give and take, it's probably not, it's probably not the, uh, it's not an option that you want to exercise. Um, but if you feel like, you know, I get along with people very well, etc., etc., I can flex and bend, I can forgive, move forward, I don't need to hold grudges and things of that nature, and then, hey, this might be something that's for you. If you are not yet at prime and you're watching this video, you are in a very advantageous position. Let me tell you why. I believe that if the organization Prime Inc. wanted to tweak this program, I believe that the best thing that they could possibly do, just my opinion, I believe the best thing they could possibly do is mirror um, the buddy system, whatever the case is that the military does. What they do is they'll have two people sign up together and then let them know, hey, look, we'll send you through training together. Of course, these two people can't be on the same trainer's truck, TNT, but we'll send you through training together. Your orientation would be together, your PSD. If y'all are both staying on the pad before taking your license, then that'll be together if you don't hit the road. Other than that, when both of you hit 30,000, we are going to let both of you team together. Then you have a higher chance, higher probability of longevity um, with these teams that are being formed. So if there's anything that I could tweak about the program, that would be it. I believe there would be more longevity, especially coming from someone who went through two co-drivers. Um, that was a little bit like, ah, man, I don't feel like I'm back to the terminal, pick up another co-driver and I'll lose money there, lose money again, lose money here. If there's anything that could be tweaked, that would be it. If we had just had a buddy system, y'all sign up together, put it on the application and boom, then, you know, that's it. So it seems like there would be longevity. I do know uh, two people who uh, came from the same state that I live in. I'm, one of them lived about 15, maybe 20 minutes away from me. Um, but I know they came together. They're good friends. So at least they have a better probability because they know each other. They've done life with each other already. And hopefully they have uh, already kind of met conflict and dealt with that conflict together so they know how each other works through conflict. So, um, But... If you're if you're not watching this, I mean, if you're not here at Prime already, and you're watching this, it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea to see. Hey, do you have a friend that would want to do this with you? They got to be all in. You need them. To, you you both need each other to succeed. So the pressure's on. But I think that's a good thing. You know, uh, so it's kind of like you got a wingman. You got a support system that's coming from home with your Springfield. Y'all can rent a car together. Y'all can do the whole thing together. Right. Um, so that's that. All right. Uh, so just a few things I want to say. How can how can I? You know, I've received a few questions. One from I believe it's Miss Carla. Is that it from our PSD and TNT group Facebook? I'll leave that link in the bottom. Also, um, I believe one of the questions is kind of like how how can I find a teammate? How can I get this thing kicked off? I don't know anybody. I'm new to prime. Right. Um. So I want to kind of speak to that. First off, while going through training, you, if you kind of click through someone, click with someone in any of the classes while you're doing practicing out on the pad, if you click with someone, that's a good choice. Otherwise, there is a Facebook group, Prime, Prime Inc. Team Up, or something of that nature. I'll leave it in the link of this YouTube video. Um, that's another place where people are searching for co-drivers. Um, we have the Prime Inc. Professional Drivers uh, Facebook group. That's another place you can just kind of put an ad out. Hey, my name's so-and-so. 
you know, this is where I live, looking for a co-driver, and list a few of your non-negotiables. We'll go over that in a moment. Those are ways you can find a teammate just walking around campus, kind of hanging out, things of that nature, right? Um, while we're on that topic, the first real bullet point I have on my outline here is your choice of a co-driver directly affects your success as a team. Your choice of a co-driver directly affects your success as a team, okay? I can't even overemphasize this enough. It is, it's a little bit challenging to try to really get to know someone in two or three hours, you know? Uh, I don't wanna get too deep in this video, but to some degree or another, we all wear masks in life, okay? Just being real, all right? To some degree or another, we all wear masks in life. You don't just meet someone and you are exactly who you are right in front of them and you're entirely transparent and all of your insecurities are revealed, and right? To some degree or another, we all wear masks in life. You're not gonna find out, say for instance, you're not gonna find out if someone struggles with forgiving others in the three hours of meeting them. Something you find out later. Or it's something you just directly ask them, directly bring it up, straight up, this is the deal. You know, and if it happens in the future, then it's kind of like, hey, we discussed this. Is this something you're willing to work on, right? Your choice of a co-driver is going to directly affect your success as a team, okay? Uh, does your co-driver have a pretty good work ethic, right? Is it, does your co-driver share the same goals that you have, okay? Is your co-driver really trying to get it done? Okay, so when you're choosing a co-driver, there are a number of things you want to discuss. I briefly mentioned this in the other video. Um, I also briefly mentioned this in my second most recent video, my hours of service 102. That is, you wanna discuss with your co-driver hours of service. You wanna talk, what shift do you wanna work? Do you mind working nights? Do you specifically only wanna be on days? Okay, if both of you don't really like nights, well, that's normal. A lot of people don't wanna stay up all night. Well, are we willing to share the load? You stay on nights four to six weeks, then we switch, I stay on nights, or you stay on nights, we stay out for four weeks at a time, we go home, and then we switch. Then the other person take nights, are we willing to do that? You need to iron it out right now. There ain't gonna be no arguing and changing your minds later. Let's, we done did 30,000 miles, we know what it's like by now. Okay, another topic you may want to discuss with your co-driver, I mentioned this in the first company team video, is non-negotiables. You want to talk about those non-negotiables. Here's what I mean. Uh, thought it was something bit me. You want to talk about those non-negotiables. Here's what I mean. Let's get extreme, I'm just going to exaggerate. You may have a non-negotiable and say, I need to take a shower once a day. Every day, I cannot skip a day, okay? Someone else may say, I am not willing to stop every single day to take a shower. Every other day is good for me, whatever the case may be. If that's a non-negotiable, I probably wouldn't get on the truck with that person unless you are willing to explicitly admit, I am willing to compromise and uh, make this non-negotiable, negotiable. All right, here's another one, another non-negotiable. For me, I don't feel like arguing with nobody about no politics. I don't wanna argue about religion, okay? It's just my thing. I don't wanna argue, with, I don't feel like arguing, right? Like if it gets to that. Now, me and my co-driver Doug, one time we had a conversation about politics, but it didn't feel like an argument, so I felt comfortable. And that was months, no, not months. That was miles, though. it was weeks after we had been teaming together and I felt comfortable in that conversation with him. But if I was teaming with somebody or even if I start training and I get a student, I don't want my student coming on my truck talking about politics. You know, oh, oh, I love Biden or oh, I hate Biden or oh, this, oh, that. Look, dude, I don't wanna hear about it, man. I don't feel like arguing with you. No, politics never works out, man. Never works out in a conversation. It's very difficult. Very difficult to really just, it's a non-negotiable for me. Unless I know for a fact we're comfortable together, I'm gonna cut it short, right? 
What's another non-negotiable? Um, cleanliness is a non-negotiable for me, to be honest with you. If you can't pick up after yourself, we cannot work together, okay? I can't have old food laying around, drinks we not drinking, not try to throw the napkin in the trash, but it's on the floor. That is not my style. I sweep my truck, or I vacuum. I vacuum my truck, I mop my truck, I run armor all over my truck, I'm cleaning windows every two to three days. I, and I'm not a neat freak, but I just need I just need it to be clean around me. I can't do that. It drives me nuts to even think about being in a situation like that. Your dirty clothes need to be washed every now and then, you know what I'm saying? I don't expect you to be washing clothes every day, but if the truck smell funk because of a bag of dirty clothes, we need to get that handled. I'm not gonna ignore that. Right? It's two grown people in a small space. We gotta we gotta keep our uh, I was talking to somebody. I said, uh, I like clean spaces and faces. Clean spaces and faces. I need your tongue brush. I need your body wash. I need your clothes wash and stuff. I get it. Look, I drive, you know, I know I can't hit a shower room every single day. And sometimes I'll be like, mm, you know, I need to get up in that shower. I get that. Okay. I'm not, you know, Barbie's boyfriend, Ken. All right. But, you know, we got clean spaces and faces, okay? Other things you want to discuss is home time. How often do you want to take home time? How do y'all want to take home time? You want to take it at the same time or do y'all want to alternate? You know, every two weeks, one of us goes on home time, then you get back home, we run for a week, week and a half, then the other one goes on home time while the other rides solo. How do you want to do home time? All right? And you want to discuss just any other expectations, right? I expect to be treated with respect. Okay, I expect you never to be raising your voice at me. I expect you never to be calling me out my name. Okay, if I'm on the phone, I expect you, if it's not important, I expect you to give me my time. When I'm asleep, I expect you to give me a level of privacy and solitude. If I draw the sleeper birth curtains back, I expect you to make an effort to leave me alone. That's what I'm saying. Make an effort. I get it. For example, Doug will be sleeping in the back. I stop for my lunch break. Well, I got to get, you know, my sandwich meat out the refrigerator. I'm going to do so as quietly as I possibly can. And there were some days Doug stayed asleep. Okay? But, you know, I expect you to make an effort. Don't every single day I left this. I left my headset in the back. Oh, I left this. I got to get gum from the top bunk. You know, gum, bro. Like, can you not get gum right now? Can I sleep, dude? You know what I mean? Discuss those expectations. Discuss those expectations, right? Um, you know, just, just various things like that. All right, I wanna move on. Second one is this, your ability to deal with conflict will greatly affect the success of your team. Your ability to deal with conflict will greatly affect the success of your team. I don't know one person on earth that, you know, I get along with 100%. I got a best friend, Steve. If you watch the company versus lease video that I did, my best friend Steve's at the end of that video. I love Steve, but I can't get along with Steve 100%. You know, I done ticked Steve off before, right? See what I'm saying? Me and Steve done had some tension with each other. You see? So your ability to deal with conflict and this just popped in my head, but I'm gonna couple that with your emotional intelligence, your ability to control your emotions when you are under pressure. Your ability to deal with conflict and your emotional intelligence are gonna greatly affect the success of your team, including your co-driver's ability to deal with conflict and emotional intelligence are going to greatly affect the success of your team. If you know you flip out easily, I do not think this is I do not think this is an opportunity you want to tap into. Seriously. For real. I heard a story. Matter of fact, a few, couple days ago, one of our driver lineup members teamed with somebody. Sure enough, somebody started raging, punching windows, just acting, you know. Come on now. You don't need to be. If, you, if that's you, okay, it's very likely you should ride solo, okay? Because people are going to have tense moments. I mean, you're gonna disagree with each other, all right? Um, you gotta know how to move through conflict. Sometimes it's going to mean I need to yield and other times it's going to mean I need to hold ground, 
okay? And both of you need to know, how do I deal with this conflict? Do I need to yield in this moment? Is the, is the battle you know, worth it? Is the hill worth standing on or should I move off the hill? Let that person take the hill. Don't really matter. It's not that serious, right? Um, you need to know, okay, is this something we can compromise? Can we share this hill? It, it, you just, you gotta know how to move through conflict. All right, you really gotta know how to move through conflict. All right, um, this last one, this last one I believe is, in, eh, you know what, I don't think it's important. I think I had a, got a buddy I met here, Peter. I think it's just something I identify with. I don't think it's most important, I don't know. Here's the truth of the matter about teaming. No hippie brought this up too. Truth of the matter about teaming is inevitably, inevitably, someone will emerge as the leader and someone will emerge as the follower inevitably uh, it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter who what two people you couple together someone's going to emerge as the leader someone's going to emerge as a follower or what will happen is that two people will be going back and forth for leadership trying to emerge as the leader two people be going back and forth with leadership trying to emerge as a leader what why is this important because whoever emerges as the leader needs to own that role and whoever emerges as a follower needs to own that role the leader nor the follower is more valuable or more important than the other and neither deserves more pay okay but whether you are the leader or the follower you need to own that role let me give you an example <gasps> excuse me let me give you an example we pull up to a receiver. John Doe is sleeping. Jane Doe is, of course, driving. Jane Doe pulls up to the receiver and uh, it is a receiver that requires your tandems to be slid to the back. The trailer needs to dolly down and you need to disconnect and pull away from the trailer before they will unload your trailer. Um, Jane Doe is having problems with the tan sliding the tandems to the back, the tires to the back of the trailer, so that the trailer is not squatting when the forklift goes on it. Um, Jane Doe forgets the entire process of pulling away from a trailer, forgets to dolly down. Things are happening. John Doe is laying in the back and starts to hear noise and feels a big boom. Okay. Um, if John Doe is the leader, he needs to get up. He needs to take the initiative and get out of bed. He doesn't need to wait for Jane Doe to be peeking in the curtain. He doesn't need to wait on anything. John Doe needs to get up out of bed. He needs to say, hey, what's going on? What are, what are we working with right now? Jump into action with no attitude, with no nothing. No, you know, no one needs you to patronize them, make them feel small or anything of that nature. John Dunn needs to get out of bed, jump into action and be ready to teach. I know you just jumped out of a dream and I, it might have been a good dream, but you need to jump out of bed and be ready to teach with a smile on your face because you're the leader. Okay. And unless you want to continue doing this over the course of y'all's co-drivership together, then you need to be teaching. So the next time, maybe you don't have to get up. Okay, here's another example. Same thing, John Doe, Jane Doe. Um, oh, here's another example. It's time to switch drivers. John Doe, Jane Doe still. Um, John Doe has done a post trip. John Doe is the leader still. John Doe, um, and this has nothing to do with gender. Please, let's be mature. Um, John Doe has done his post trip while Jane Doe is getting ready. Uh, John Doe has the planning in his head as the leader as far as what hours need to be crunched, how the pace that needs to be done to make an on-time delivery. Uh, Jane Doe comes from getting ready in a bathroom or something of that nature, comes and notices that the I'm a ref, or uh, you know in this situation John Doe and Jane Doe are refrigerator drivers, um, and Jane Doe notices that Jane Doe notices that the reefer unit 
is set on, let's say 35, the reefer unit is set on 35, but it says uh, it's set on 35 and five degree con uh, of variation. And, but the unit says that it's 37 degrees inside the trailer. All right, John Doe goes to lay down. It's been a long night. He happened to drive night. Um, and Jane Doe, we're not moving the truck. John Doe realized the truck's not moving. Jane Doe's been outside for a while. The truck's not moving. All right. Jane Doe messages dispatch. Then Jane Doe calls Jane's friend. Now Jane Doe's on the phone with her friend talking about the reefer unit. And John Doe's getting out of the truck wondering why we aren't working because we're on a tight schedule. So then John Doe's trying to talk to Jane Doe, but Jane Doe's ignoring John Doe and instead talking to her friend on the phone. Okay, you see how this is going wrong? Now the team is not working together. Instead, we're working as individuals. That's not wise. I'm telling you to run a team into the ground. Okay, now Jane Doe wants to tell John Doe, no, we don't need to move because the thing, yada, yada, yada. And John Doe's trying to say, hey, look, it's five degree variance. Um, you know, it's gonna do that sometime. Or actually, I think it was defrosting or something. The temperature t tends to, to uh, uh, variate when it defrosts, but it'll go back down, you know? Uh, clearly, I'm sure you could tell him telling a story, but nevertheless, you see what I'm saying? But Jane Doe doesn't want her listen about why the temperature's off. Well, I'm not running because I'm responsible for the box. Well, John's trying to explain, listen, the box is fine. Everything's fine. We need to get out of here though, okay? Um, so, it, what I'm saying is this. Sorry about that, yo. What I'm saying is this. The leader needs to be a leader and a good leader at that. Give me just a second here. Hey, what's up? Can I call you back in about five minutes? All right. Bye. All right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, got to wrap this up because you say I said five minutes. <laughs> Listen, though, the follower needs to own that role of being a follower and trust the leader. The leader needs to own that role of being a leader and be a good leader, a merciful leader, an understanding leader, a gracious leader, right? A, a steady leader, right? And, and the followers got to be the same, you know? Um, allow that leader to make some mistakes, but follow that leader's direction, right? That leader needs to be understanding and listen to that follower. That follower may be telling you something that's going to make you be a better leader today, but if you're heavy-handed, oh, we're going to do what I say type of leader, you're, you're going to wreck your own team, okay? Uh, the leader-follower relationship is not based on importance or who's more valuable. It's only based on strengths, weaknesses, and, 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 and personality and character. That's it. That's it. It makes no one more valuable than the other. It really doesn't, right? But you got to own those roles. Nevertheless, listen, um, I believe I've answered the questions. I've given my opinion re regarding the uh, company team option, um, but really consider your co-driver because I'm telling you that's going to make you or break your team. It's going to make or break your team. Make it or break it. So look, it's 4.36. Uh, my buddy's calling me at 5 o'clock about to roll in Millennium. Give me something to eat. I'm coming back here and I'm going to relax because your boy got his truck back. So we got work to do tomorrow. All right. Y'all take it easy. Drop safe. Find somebody love day. It's your boy Travis Kinley checking out. Love y'all. And I will see you soon.